For those of you who have been asking me for a graphics card overclocking guide, your wait is finally over. We're going to kill two birds with one stone in this video. The first bird we're going to kill in this bed, I'm not going to, that was a bad analogy, uh, has to do with the tutorial itself. I'm going to show you guys how I personally overclock all of my graphics cards, assuming they can be overclocked further than they already have been out of the box. And then I'm going to show you the kinds of performance benefits you should expect to see with such an overclock. Now just for kicks, I've also downclocked my GPU in one scenario and downclocked my memory in another scenario. So you're going to see four separate trend lines and four separate bars in these graphs. Uh, but that, that's just to give you a feel for what you should expect if you overclock one or the other, or in this case, underclock one or the other. So this is like coming from a uh, from a reference cooler kind of standpoint. So reference coolers always have lower clock speeds, and then the third-party coolers, um, you know, made by brands like Gigabyte, MSI, ASUS, all of those will generally have higher uh, core clocks and memory clocks, just because the coolers are usually better than the uh, blower-style coolers of NVIDIA and uh, AMD. So with that, before I jump ahead of myself, I'm going to show you the tutorial. It takes like two minutes. Minutes. Don't bother taking notes. It's very simple. Let's go ahead and jump into that. First up, we need to download our overclocking tool. I just shoot for MSI Afterburner, though programs like Gigabyte OC Guru and Sapphire Tri-X are just as viable. I prefer Afterburner for its versatility. You can tamper with practically any graphics card setting, including those rather obscure shader frequencies and even fan speeds. Once you've downloaded and installed Afterburner, open it up and get a feel for the user interface. The left contains several slider tabs, voltage control, which we won't be tampering with in this video, the power limiter, core clock, memory clock, and fan controller. You can also program several overclocking profiles for various scenarios and store them into Afterburner itself. On the bottom right are the apply, reset, and settings buttons. The apply button will save and execute the current clock, fan voltage, and power settings you've just toggled. The reset button will restore the card to its original settings. And the settings button opens up an entirely different window with literally hundreds of different control settings, monitors, and editors. I'll let you play around with that on your own time. Off to the east is the hardware monitor, which provides visual, live feedback of what's going on with your system. Anything from GPU temperatures, card fan speeds, and even CPU and memory usages can be found on this tab. You just have to scroll down quite a bit. Once you're comfortable with the software tool, prepare to overclock. Are you ready? This can get pretty intense. Pay very close attention. There we go. Oh, you were expecting more. No, that's that's literally it. That's how you overclock a graphics card. I should confess I raised both by 100 megahertz prior to this and my card crashed. So 50 megahertz is likely the threshold for this card, which was already severely overclocked out of the box, mind you. I should also know that you can raise or lower one without raising or lowering the other and vice versa. The memory and core controllers are entirely separate on these cards. By the way, if you're suspecting that 50 MHz isn't all that much and probably not worth it, just wait till you see the benchmarks. Once you're satisfied with your presets, click apply and close the software. If you want to have uh, your settings initiate upon startup, you can click the button on the bottom left hand corner of the afterburner panel, though I don't recommend doing this until you verify that your overclock is actually stable. And to do that, we'll need to run Heaven Benchmark, which will stress our GPU in a well-rounded series of cutscenes. You can also play your favorite GPU-intensive AAA title for a few hours to ensure that real-world stresses won't yield a driver crash either. If this does happen, hop back into Afterburner and adjust your settings accordingly. At first, it will be difficult to gauge your car's overclocking tolerance, however, as with the CPU, you'll get a feel for just how stubborn your chip actually is. Can't say I didn't tell you so, right? Very simple process, just be mindful of sliding those bars too far to the right, especially if you already have a car that's, that's factory overclocked like this one. So you're not gonna have much additional overclocking headroom. I was able to squeeze out that additional 50 megahertz in both the GPU and memory, uh, but after the benchmark finished, I decided to open up after, uh, not after, but I decided to open up Shadow Play and you know record the screen so that I could show you the results live, and uh, that didn't happen, that the card crashed. Uh, so we saw the NVIDIA driver crash notification on the bottom right hand side of the screen. Sometimes your screen will shut off, it'll reboot, and then uh, it'll pretty much run your car to stock. Maybe even in safe mode like mine did where I was only getting like 22 FPS after that, whereas I was usually getting about 40 or 45. Uh, so that'll require, for the most part, a computer restart, uh, and then your card should be running full speed again at its, at its full potential. So apart from that, uh, I have two other scenarios. I have the underclock GPU scenario and the underclock memory scenario. Uh, the way that the, the keys are labeled, the first frequency, so it's gonna be around 1500 for all four, uh, that's your, your core frequency, that's your GPU frequency, and then the second megahertz value uh, is your memory frequency. So you'll be able to see that the memory was overclocked in one and then underclocked in another, and then it was the same in two, same with the, the core clock. So keep those in mind, uh, but anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Here are the results.
So it's pretty awesome to see that with just a 50 megahertz overclock in both our GPU and our memory, we were able to achieve an average of an additional FPS in uh, heaven at least, uh, which is almost entirely graphics based, so our CPU is really going to have much of an influence there. I didn't show you any other gaming benchmarks because the, the results are going to vary uh, drastically. So a game like GTA 5 or City Skylines, which I've shown in previous videos, uh, are, those are more CPU intensive, so you're not going to see those kinds of gains. Uh, by just overclocking your graphics card, but in, in very GPU intensive games, something like Dirt Rally, Crisis 3, uh, those kinds of games will benefit even more from an overclock, and that's what's indicative of Heaven Benchmark here. Uh, so with that, keep in mind that uh, not all overclocking scenarios will be the same, so you might not be able to overclock your card anywhere near as much as I was able to, or anywhere near as little. Uh, I got to 50 megahertz above what it's already rated at. It's not a great overclock, but it, it's it's fantastically overclocked out of the box, so I can't really complain there. But you definitely saw that coming from something like a reference cooler uh, frequency in both our memory and our, our GPU, that's, that's a big jump coming from that to, to something like this, uh, which I wanted to basically sum up this video with. If you're if you're kind of struggling between a reference cooler and something that's custom cooled, not custom cooled, but you know, third party cooled by a manufacturer like Gigabyte or Asus or MSI, uh, those kinds of, of manufacturers are gonna they're gonna throw really nice coolers into their into their cards so that they can achieve additional overclocks uh, that would yield uh, better performance in games. And that's their selling points, right? So that's what they're trying to tell you to, to do is, is buy our cards because our cards are better performers than the Nvidia stock cards or the uh, AMD stock cards. Um, so that's, you know, that's that's really the gist of this video here. But overclock if you can, go ahead and experiment with it. If your, your drivers start crashing and stuff, just tone it down. You're going to be fine. Just don't do anything outrageous and like overvolt your GPU or any of that. That's something I didn't mention here and that's because my, my voltage was locked. Um, I couldn't mess with my voltage on this card just because it's, it's impossible. Um, but if you were doing something like water cooling a card and you had a card that was uh, voltage unlocked, then that would be something else you would want to do. So if you're interested about how voltage affects overclocking uh, and what you should kind of do to gauge both of those out and get those kind of in tune with each other, check out the card above me where I overclock my 6600K. Very interesting video. I get it to like 4.8, 4.9 gigahertz, uh, but it requires a lot of voltage and that's what that video is about. But with that, I want to hear from you in the comment sections below. Be sure to let me know what kind of graphics card or cards SLI or Crossfire you're currently sporting in your rig, and uh, tell me if you plan to overclock or are currently overclocking, and how complex your procedure was compared to mine. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you think it deserves one, give it a thumbs down if you think it doesn't, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't be shy, folks. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.